In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. I don't see any unfamiliar faces, but if you're visiting with us, we welcome you as we gather to celebrate the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And as we just sang, we have been called to the banquet, and the banquet is ready. So let us take a moment to thank God for all the blessings that we have received as we seek His mercy, His love, and His forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us now at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy, rich food and pure, choice wines. On this mountain, He will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of His people He will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that He has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of the Lord all the days of my
in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in Him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A woman decided that she was going to have a dinner party for a good number of her friends. And so she spent most of the week cleaning the house, baking, cooking, preparing the table. 
And when everyone finally arrived and sat down to eat, the mother turned to her six-year-old daughter and said, Honey, why don't you say the blessing? Mommy, she said, I don't know what to say. Well, Mommy said, just simply say what you hear Mommy say. So the little girl bowed her head and she said, Dear Lord, why on earth did I invite this many people to dinner? (laughs) Like the woman in the story, you and I can occasionally have regrets about some of the invitations that we offer. But that's not the case with our God. You see, our God is a God of invitation. A God who is constantly inviting people into relationship, inviting them to share in His divine life and in His love. The parable that we just heard in today's Gospel portrays this God of invitation. It also tells us something important about ourselves and our own worthiness to accept God's call. The king, in this parable, is constantly inviting people to come to the wedding banquet he has prepared for his son. But no one wants to come. Finally, in frustration, he says, Look, the dinner is ready, but those who were invited are unworthy. Now what does it mean in the world of this parable to be unworthy? Well, it's simple. Unworthiness consists in refusing the invitation. Underlying this parable is a fundamental theological belief that the invitation of God is supreme. It is really the only thing that matters. Our worthiness, our success, and our failures, they don't count as much as God's call. And therefore, worthiness does not result from all the good things that we have done, but simply from our willingness to say yes to the invitation. Unworthiness is not determined by the mistakes and by the sins that we have committed, but simply our stubbornness in refusing to come to the wedding banquet. The parable is very clear on this. Look who ends up at the wedding banquet. Everyone that the slaves can bring in off the streets. The good and the bad alike. The point here is that our moral condition is secondary. Secondary to God's invitation. The banquet is ready, and God wants us to come. Now this insight can clarify a number of misperceptions that we can have about the Christian faith. At times we may think that faith is about us being good, but it's really about God being good. At times we may think that faith is about us making the choice to love God, but faith is really about God making the choice to love us. All the good things that we do, all the wonderful qualities that we have, don't make us worthy of that love. All the mistakes that we've made, all the sins that we have committed, do not disqualify us from the invitation that God is offering to us. God invites us, and worthiness depends upon whether we say yes or no to His invitation. To say that in another way, God does not love us because we are good. We are good because God loves us. We are good because we've said yes to God's God's invitation. And despite any of our successes or any of our shortcomings, we have chosen to come to the feast. Clearly, once we've said yes, once we have accepted the invitation, we try to live a moral life. We try to do good and to avoid evil. But all of us know that our success in that area can be rather uneven, let's say. And yet our success or our failure is secondary to God's invitation. It is God's call that counts. So never think that God loves you because you're good, or because you come to church, or because you give to charity, 
or because you're a good parent or spouse or a good friend. All of these things are commendable. But God's love for you is prior to and greater than any of your achievements. None of the good things you do have any claim on God's love. Because before all of them, God freely chose to create you, to save you through His Son, Jesus Christ, and to call you to eternal life. Never believe that God has stopped loving you because you have sinned or because you have failed somehow, because you've cheated or lied or maybe hurt other people, or because you're prejudiced or selfish. God's love is prior to and greater than any of your sins or failures. Our God is a God of invitation. God invites all of us into relationship into His divine life. Our worthiness depends only upon our willingness to say yes. So let us say yes. Let's forget all of our successes and all of our failures, all of our vices and all of our virtues. Let us simply say yes to God's love. The wedding banquet is ready. Come, let us feast together. Amen. And now let us stand and together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trust in God's merciful and abundant love, let us make our requests known to Him. For our church, may God continue to help us grow in holiness and strength as we nurture a culture of healing and life. Let us pray to the Lord. For lawmakers, may God's grace direct their hearts in proposing laws that protect the life and rights of all people, including those yet to be born. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are sick, may they know the healing power of Christ, who is our divine physician. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us here this evening, may the Lord continue to help us speak the truth in charity to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. For our diocesan seminarians and for all those who are studying for the priesthood or religious life, that God will continue to bless them in their discernment. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are having birthdays or anniversaries this week, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Jason Randolph, for whom this Mass is celebrated, may they find a place at the banquet of life in the eternal kingdom, Let us pray to the Lord. 
And for all those who have asked for our prayers, those we have promised to pray for this evening, and those who have no one to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, our salvation comes from you alone. As you watch over the lives of your people, hear the prayers we offer this evening, and answer them according to your holy will, and we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Your death, O Lord, until You come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of His death and resurrection, we offer You, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that You've held us worthy to be in Your presence and minister to You. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church. Spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Michael, our patron, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage and the privilege now to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of Your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, peace, peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the body of Christ. Thank you. Our second collection this weekend is for the Priests Retirement and Health Association, which was supposed to be taken up back uh, a couple of weeks ago. The body of Christ. 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 Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your only Son, 
so you may make us shares of His divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. If you have not signed up for the um, flock notes, which on that little paper that's in the pew tells you how to do that, this is really good stuff. This grow plus go. I mean, we have to grow in our faith. We have to do something to grow, but then we have to go out and do something. You know, like we were talking about in the, in the homily. You know, we're invited to the banquet, but now we've got to go out into the world and do something. So sign up for Flock Note, and you'll get this every Friday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That's when it goes out. So, and then you can print it off, or you can just read it on your computer. But there's some really good stuff in this. Also, the bishop has decided to create a diocesan pastoral council. And the way he's going to do that is we're going to have a vicariat pastoral council. And they would like to have two members from each parish. Now, don't everybody run up here at once and tell me you want to be on council, but... If you would like to serve, I want people that would really want to do that. And then you may be elected to the Diocesan Pastoral Council, which is only going to meet a couple of times a year down in Charleston at John the 23rd Pastoral Center. So it'll be an overnight stay, uh, which certainly will be paid for by the diocese. But anyway, that's a big diocesan council to kind of advise the bishop on some things that he's interested in doing around here. So anyway, if you'd like to serve on the Vicariat Council, with the possibility of being invited to the Diocesan Pastoral Council, please let me know. Also, I just put up the posters for our new seminarians. So you might want to look. They're on the door to the sacristy or right there where the bulletins usually are. You might want to take one of those names. Take all of them if you want, but write down a name and keep that person in your prayer. Uh, if you haven't been keeping up with my Facebook and other things, if you don't, you're not one of my Facebook friends, uh, my sister passed away last Sunday. And we buried her on Tuesday. And I thank you all for your cards and your thoughts and your prayers, everyone that's emailed and texted me. Uh, she passed away very peacefully. But that COVID is horrible stuff. The last two weeks have been the longest two weeks of my life. But anyway, thank you. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God.